In the shadowy world of criminal activity, the first rule is to evade the authorities at all costs and to always keep a low profile. After all, leaving a trail of breadcrumbs for law enforcement to follow is akin to signing your own warrant of arrest. It's practically unheard of for a criminal to go back to the scene of a crime just to taunt police and tell them that you hold the key to solving the case. Yet that's exactly what happened on July 25, 2022, when police in Essex were attending a crime scene and a man with a bottle of brandy in hand told them he knew more than he should. Who are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a I can help her. What's going on? Uniform one night. So, so you think something's happened to a male in this address? No, I know what happened. What I happened then? Everything. Tell me what everything. happened. This city is mine because I know what happened. I needed me to know, figure it out, what happened. If you don't have me, you don't know what happened. You're gonna think about me, but it's not gonna be me because you have no proof. Can you get in the van, please? Uh, uh, um, You've been arrested, okay? We're trying I've to, been arrested, yes. Yeah. So send me the law. We're trying, not, so, okay, we're trying me. not to manhandle you, but we need you to get in the van. Marek Heko is a Slovakian citizen who moved to the United Kingdom in 2019. He settled in the city of Chelmsford, about 30 miles northeast from London, captivated by its promise of endless possibilities and a fresh start. At just 23 years old, Merrick was eager to make his mark on the world and forge a new path for himself in this foreign land. He was willing to put in the effort to move forward in life, working as a waiter and chef in two different restaurants, putting in long hours in order to seize the opportunities that lay before him. Fast forward two years to the year 2021, and it seems that Merrick was pretty much settled in the UK. In addition to having secured a stable income and building a life for himself, his personal life also seemed to go from high to high. In October 2021, Merrick started a relationship with Stephanie Bream. She was a bar lady at a local bar, and also a resident of Chelmsford. Right from the start, Merrick was smitten by Stephanie, always wanting to be around her and spend time together. And although everything went well at first, it wasn't long before the cracks started showing. As their relationship progressed, Stephanie became increasingly suspicious of Merrick's behavior, with lies and deceit becoming a regular occurrence. She thought that he may be using drugs, an allegation Merrick always denied. Despite his constant denials, Stephanie could sense that something was off. She knew the signs all too well, and Merrick was exhibiting them in spades. You didn't need to be an expert to know when Merrick was high. Six months into their relationship in May 2022, Stephanie Bream had finally had enough and she broke it off with Merrick. She said by this time there was basically no trust left between them, and she couldn't see herself continuing the relationship any longer. And although the breakup was amicable, Merrick still struggled to move on. He would bombard her with long and emotional text messages begging her to take him back and give him another chance. The messages were constant and seemed to escalate quite quickly, and were borderline obsessive. He would pitch up to her work and home uninvited, demanding she speak to him and hear him out. Merrick even told her that he had been diagnosed with colon cancer, a lie to garner sympathy in an attempt to win her back. None of his attempts were successful, however, as by then all trust had already broken down and Stephanie didn't believe a word he said. His messages were incessant, his pleas were unyielding, and his presence was unwelcome, yet none of this seemed to slow Merrick down. He would obsessively stalk her Facebook profile, looking at every post she interacted with trying to figure out if she was in another relationship. He would stalk the profiles of people whose photos she liked, on whose statuses she commented, and even people she recently befriended. He was convinced that she was seeing someone else, and he was convinced that this was the reason she didn't want to be with him. Merrick was actually not too far from the truth. Although the reason that she didn't want to see him anymore had nothing to do with another love interest, the fact of the matter was that Stephanie had recently begun dating someone else. A short while after ending her relationship with Merrick Hecko, Stephanie Bream started seeing Adrian Ellingford. He was a 44-year-old resident of Chelmsford and was described as a hard-working good man who was always willing to help out friends and neighbors whenever they were in a pickle. He was also a father to two boys aged 10 and 12, and Adrian would regularly volunteer at the local boys' scout group. And although Adrian seemed to be a good father and a good friend to many, he also had his weaknesses. Although he was seeing Stephanie Bream at the time, he actually had a wife at home, who he had been married to for 17 years, and the relationship he had with Stephanie was an extramarital affair. It seems that the affair didn't bother either Stephanie or Adrian too much, 
and they continued seeing each other whenever they could. One afternoon while Stephanie was waiting for Adrian to come over to her place, Merrick actually came to knock on her door. He told her that he was there to pick up a few of the things that he left behind while they were dating. Despite Stephanie acting quickly and giving him his belongings, Merrick refused to leave, instead staying outside on the porch for another 40 minutes begging Stephanie to give him another chance. While he was standing on the front porch, declaring his undying love to Stephanie, Adrian pulled up in his car for his scheduled visit with Stephanie. He passed Merrick on the way into the house, and although he didn't acknowledge him or speak to him, he did catch Merrick's attention. Merrick wanted to know who this man was that just entered the house, but Stephanie wasn't responding to any of his questions. Because Stephanie was still living at home with her mother at the time, Merrick wasn't certain if Adrian was there to visit her or if he was a friend of her mom's, so he didn't push the matter too far, instead reverting back to asking Stephanie to give him another chance. When she continued to ignore him and refused to give him attention, Merrick eventually got tired and left Stephanie's home, no doubt still curious about who the man was, that had just come to visit the Bream household. On July 24, 2022, only two months after breaking up with Merrick Hecko, Adrian Ellingford was out with Stephanie Bream and her mother. It's believed that they went to a local pub for drinks, before returning to Stephanie's home a bit later in the evening. When they got home, the three of them continued to socialize in the garden before eventually calling it a night, at around 1 a.m. Adrian and Stephanie retreated to her bedroom on the first floor of the house, while her mom also went to her bedroom on the ground floor. Cell phone records reflect that Stephanie last checked her phone at 2.43 a.m., meaning that she most likely fell asleep shortly before 3. About an hour and a half later, Stephanie was suddenly awakened from a deep sleep. Adrian was in the process of getting out of bed, telling her that he thinks someone had just been in the room. Still groggy and disoriented, she asked him what he meant, and as he was making his way around to the foot of the bed towards her, he once again told her that someone had been in the house and then the very next moment, he collapsed on the floor. When Stephanie examined what was going on, she noticed that Adrian had blood on him, and she immediately called her mom for help. As her mom came upstairs to try and assist, Stephanie was already on the call with 999, trying to explain the odd situation. During the harrowing 11-minute call, Stephanie's mind raced, trying to piece together the fragments of the ghastly puzzle before her. With each passing moment, the grim truth unraveled, Adrian had been viciously attacked, stabbed not once but twice, the second blow delivered with such savage force that the blade shattered, becoming lodged within his wounded back. Emergency services arrived a short while later and sadly, Adrian Ellingford was declared dead on the scene. Police got to work immediately, cordoning off the crime scene and trying to collect as much evidence as possible. They noted that there had been no sign of forced entry, although Stephanie always slept with the sliding door open due to the heat of the July summer sun. The front door was also left open, which indicated to police that the intruder must have entered through the open sliding door and then left through the front door of the house. At the bottom of the stairs, they found the handle of the knife, and on the side of the house, they found an empty wine bottle. Police worked tirelessly to find as much evidence as possible, and as the hours passed and darkness turned to daylight, they received an unexpected breakthrough in the case. At around 7.30 a.m. on the morning of the murder, they were approached by a visibly inebriated man with a bottle of brandy in hand, and what he told them would immediately raise their suspicions. Who are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a I can help her. What's going on? Uniform what one night? Yeah, I can help her. What's going on? Yeah? No, I know what happened. I know the people they involved. So... Go again. Yeah. But need to dig deep. You know? Thank you. What's your name? I'm not gonna tell you my name. I don't give a f because I know what happened. I needed me to know, figure it out what happened. If you don't have me, you don't know what happened. I'm looking I just for know it. that some guy come here. Yeah. And then he f up some guy. I don't know what, what happened. Right. I don't know what happened. He just got. You're gonna think about me, but it's not gonna be me because you have no proof. So, so you think something's happened to a male in this address? No, I know what happened. What I happened then? Everything. Tell I me what happened. Everything. This city is mine. I'm not gonna. This tell city you is yours, is it? Yeah, this city is mine. 
and you get in the van for you. You've been arrested, okay? We're trying I've to, been arrested, yes. Yeah. So send me the we're law. We're trying not, so, okay, we're trying send me. not to manhandle you, but we need you to get in the van. Merrick Hecko was arrested shortly after 7.40 a.m. on the morning of July 25, 2022. He was initially arrested on suspicion of being drunk and disorderly, but by a quarter to five that afternoon, police had arrested him on suspicion of murdering Adrian Ellingford, and he was immediately their prime suspect. Merrick Hecko went on trial in February 2023, and during the three-week trial, the state put forward their case. They said that Merrick was obsessed with Stephanie and couldn't get over their breakup. He would stalk her regularly and refuse to move on, and after realizing that she was in another relationship, he couldn't accept it and decided to act out. Prosecutors said that on the morning of July 25th, CCTV cameras captured Merrick Hecko purchasing two bottles of wine from a garage on Rainsford Road in Chelmsford at 3.47 a.m., walking towards the direction of Nelson Grove, where Stephanie had been staying. At 4.45 a.m. right after the incident, he was captured again walking in the opposite direction of Stephanie's home, and this time he was carrying only one bottle of wine. Prosecutors said that they believed that Merrick went to Stephanie's home and drank one bottle of wine on the side of her house and then left the bottle there. His DNA was later found on the bottle. The court heard that after drinking the bottle of wine, Hecko entered the house through the open sliding door, and that's when he saw Ellingford in bed with Stephanie. He stabbed him twice in the back before leaving through the front door of the house, dropping the handle of the knife at the bottom of the stairs. His DNA was also found on the knife handle. Merrick Hecko denied any involvement in the murder and explained that the bottle of wine and knife only had his DNA on it, because he had been at the house many times before, and that it was probably cross-contaminated. He also said that the reason he returned to the scene offering to help was that he heard about the incident on the news that morning, and he wanted to get to Stephanie to console her. The prosecution was quick to point out, however, that by the time Hecko arrived on the scene, no information had been released to the public, and that nothing had been reported on the news. On March 14, 2023, after less than a day of deliberations, the jury at the Chelmsford Crown Court found Merrick Hecko guilty of the murder of Adrian Ellingford. He was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 26 years before he would be eligible for parole. Following the conviction, Adrian's wife paid an emotional tribute to him. She said the following, Adrian was my amazing husband of 17 years. As well as being my husband, he was a loving son, a caring brother, a friend to many, and most importantly, a truly brilliant father to our boys. They will not have Adrian with them through the milestones in their lives. He will never be able to teach them to drive, buy them their first drink, or celebrate their academic achievements. He will never see them grow up into young men who will have partners and families of their own. No one will ever be able to replace their dad. Adrian, you will always be missed by us as your family, and you will always hold a special place in our hearts. We miss you every day and love you forever.